In this video we're going to be looking at baddies or the characters in your game that are going to kill the character that you're controlling. So since the last time you saw this level I've added a few more blocks to make platforms. Now this isn't the finished game it's just to show really what the character can do and it's kind of looking cool. It's doing what I want it to. For now what I want you to do is concentrate on that robot which is moving left and right. All I did is I went to Stencil Forge, I typed in the word robot and downloaded it. Now if we have a look at the code of the robot, so if we go over here, basically I've set up a really simple movement which is, if we just concentrate on this, I've said if the X, that means the X position of the robot is less than 10, which is all the way on the left hand side of the screen, we set the X speed of the robot to 5 which is moving to the right. And then I kind of measured the block with my mouse, the block that the robot is walking on. And I said if the robot ever goes past this 200 point, change the X speed to minus 5, which means the robot will now go left. And if we have a look at the way the robot is moving, you can see that it's actually quite cool because he goes to the end of the platform and he just goes back and he kind of bounces left and right. That's exactly what we want. But we've kind of given ourselves a problem here. Let's say I wanted that robot on this platform over here, or on that platform over there, or wherever I want another robot to be. I now have to go back and program a whole bunch of new numbers, because of course 10 and 200 are exactly what this platform is here. They're the different values up here, completely different here. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to make copies of the same baddie just to change the programming here, because five or six baddies and I am going to lose count of how many baddies I've got. I have to adjust the numbers and then it gets even worse if I want some kind of collision with my character, the monkey, I have to now program five different collisions. So this is really not the way to work, especially when baddies are the same character, just multiple versions of them on the same screen. So let's think about another way of doing this. And what we're going to do is, I warn you, this is a bit of an advanced video so if you're finding what I'm talking about here too hard go back and watch those beginner and intermediate videos at least so you've got your game working the way you want to and then come back to this when you're a bit more confident with these uh, events and these blocks that I'm going to use. Now the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to the tile set that I downloaded for all the platforms the floor and everything else in this game and you can see that we've very simply use just this middle brown block here inside the level. So these platforms which are hanging in the air are just made up of this brown block over here. And for this video what I'm going to do is use this stripey block over here as the end points of each of the platforms and I'm going to explain that in a second. So let's go back to my level one. I'm going to use this middle stripey block here and I'm just going to paint over the end here and the end here. So effectively I've made end points to that platform. I could do that everywhere so I can also put it there and there, I can put it there and there. Now in your game you don't of course have to use different colors but for my video I'm gonna make it obvious that I'm using this middle stripey block as a special kind of end point. So if we go back to the tiles I'm on this middle stripey block here and what I'm going to do where it says data I'm going to type the word end capital P point, so end point, like so. That's going to sit inside only this tile's data box. If I click on any other tile you'll see it goes back to its normal text. So just that tile there is now called end point. And remember I used that exact tile in the level to mark these end points of the platform. Let's go to our robot and what we need to do now is make a, a set of instructions that say to the robot when you go to the end point you have to turn around and go back where you came from. So first things first, I set up an attribute called Robot Velocity or Rob Vel for short. That's kind of important because whenever I set the speed of an object, I never normally write 5 or 10. I always use an attribute because later on you can change how fast or which direction a character is moving in really fast. So what I've done here is I've set up a when created, so that's a when creating block and all I've done is set the robot velocity to 5. Now remember 5 is going towards the right. It's a slow speed and it's going towards the right. And what we need to do now is to disable this movement here which I don't want because like we explained before it's going to cause me too many problems. 
And what I'm going to do now is enable a behavior I made before, which is simply always, that's when updating, that's an always block, set the X speed of that robot to the robot velocity, the robvel. And if you know, we created it at five. So when the game starts, the robot is going to move at a speed of five to the right. So remembering I've disabled this one, so now this one works here. If we were to play the game now, you can see it works really well. The robot is just moving to the right. Of course, we haven't really programmed the robot to do anything, so we haven't told it to stop, turn around, but it's moving just fine. So that part of the code is working just fine. So what we now need to do is the following. We need to tell the robot, move at a speed of five to the right, but when you reach this tile over here, the one that we have written as end point, we would like the robot to hit this tile and just turn around and go back and so on and so on. So every time that robot hits that stripy tile, it will change direction and go the other way, kind of way making a bouncing yo-yo action. So it's going to go left and right in a bouncing motion. So let's see how we can do that. So to set up this bouncing action from left to right, we need a collision. So we're going to go to our collisions and we're going to go to a member of a group. So we're going to say when actor self, that's the robot, hits an actor of, and we're going to do a group which is going to be the tiles. So of course it's a tile. And then what we're going to do is very cleverly, we're going to say every time you hit something that's a collision, and we're going to figure out how we're going to make it a collision. And what we're going to say is we're going to put a big if in here. We're going to say if, let's go back to our collisions, if the data for collided tiles, now remember the data is that box there. So if we write the word endpoint in data, what we can do with the robot is say, well, if you hit a tile and the data for that tile says endpoint, so just to recap, when the robot hits a tile, and then any time there's a collision, if the data in that tile says endpoint, which is what we typed, we want the robot to change direction. Now, to change direction, we have to know which direction the robot is moving in. So what we'll do is bring two ifs. What we'll say, first of all, if the x speed of the actor is a certain speed. So let's figure this out. If the x speed of the actor is more than zero, so if it's more than zero, that means that the robot is going right. If the x speed of the actor is less than zero, that means it is currently traveling left. And then what we can do is kind of set the motion accordingly. So what we'll do is go to the attributes, and very simply, we'll say set the robot velocity to minus five. Now, why are we doing that? If the X speed is more than zero, that means it's going right. While it is traveling right, it's going to hit a tile that has endpoint written in it. So we want it to now go left, which is minus five. Equally, the opposite is true. If this robot is going left and hits a tile, we want it to then turn around and go right. So let's give this a go. And now you can see that we've kind of got a robot who's stuck. Now, that's actually quite easy to understand because I put the robot right at the end of the platform, which means that when we start the game, he's going left and right, and he now doesn't know which way to go. So an easy way to fix this will just be to go to our level and just move our robot slightly to the right, like so. Now, if we run the game again, we should see that it works perfectly. And here we have the robot. He's bouncing left to right, right to left, because of those tiles with the endpoint written inside their data. So let's take this to the next level and see that if we added another set of robots, so let's put a robot on this platform over here and this platform over here. Let's test that game. Now, if everything's worked the way it should, all robots, should bounce off those endpoint platforms and change their direction. And what we've done then is saved a huge amount of time. We don't have to program different robots. 
And there you go, we've got a single actor robot multiplied three times on the screen with the same event or the same behavior and all three robots are acting exactly as they should. Our character can run around, jump up and down, and now we have to program whether the robot dies or whether he can shoot those robots or whatever. Equally, once you've watched this video, you can understand that we can program any tile to do anything to any character in the game. By that I mean, here's the monkey running on the ground. If I wanted a tile that would, for example, kill our monkey character, we could very simply go to our tile set, pick up one of these tiles, let's say the grassy spikes, go over here and put in the data kill monkey, for example. Now I can use that exactly the same way as I've used this for each collision point set of blocks. I can now very easily say that if the monkey ever touched that block, it would lose a life or it would die. And really I can program any tile to do anything as long as I use that data. So it's a really powerful way in your game of controlling what happens when a character touches a certain block.